beautiful people welcome to on brits block as you come in please like this video it will help me out greatly thank you very much we are on season two now y'all of why the f did i get married we are going to now follow julian as she goes to her story lies he told of her husband jared i'll be posting the rest of them later please follow me as we go on this journey part five of the lies he told so time progresses, we ended up going to Mississippi. He definitely meets my family. We go to Piccadilly. He tells my parents at Piccadilly like, oh yeah, you know, I used to be a very big dude and I'm not gonna lie, that man was heavy, over 350 pounds easy. Now he's about 186 in current time. 186 pounds so he was telling them about how he got um weight loss surgery done how he's been able to maintain it because believe it or not the boy could not eat a full lunchable so i knew he had some type of gastric sleeve or something like that he told them the same things that he told me on the very first night how he was raised in louisiana how you know his his grandmother, you know, helped raise him and that was his mom until he found out that, you know, later on down the line that his real mama was his alleged sister, which she was there his entire life from my understanding. And he just went down the line and he was telling them everything that he had told me. On the way back from Mississippi, we came the Beltway, so we passed through the Atascacita Humble area. He said, babe, you want me to take you over there to where me and my ex-wife used to live? I said, you talking about like your old house? He was like, yeah, because I know at some point we're probably gonna be looking for houses. So I kind of want to show you the house that we stayed in because I want a much bigger house this time. I said, okay, that's cool. We drive, we drive into a subdivision and we landed on a random street now after the whole baby situation with cc i left a part out about cc but i'll get back to that we go down a random street and he points out to a house and he said babe that's the house that we used to have now i want to tell you guys the story about the ex-wife and the situation with him. He told me, remember in one of those parts, I told you that he said that the wife cheated on him when they were married. So the storyline about the ex-wife is that he was working out of town because he was training for different Buffalo Wild Wing restaurants that were up and coming in different local cities like Austin, San Antonio, Dallas. He's doing that. He claims that the man next door was sleeping around with his ex-wife and he came home one day unexpected. His wife was home from work. She was not expecting him to be home. He told me that that man next door was sitting on his couch, on Jared's couch holding his remote, watching his TV, but ass naked. <laughs> this man told me that they got into a tussle. The next door neighbor tried running out of the front door and he ends up shooting him in the leg. I asked Jared, did he go to jail for that? And he told the officers that it was self-defense and they let him off. He did not do any jail time because of that because the man was technically in his home. I believed that story. <laughs> I 
I did, guys. I believed it, and I know it makes me look like a fucking fool, but I did. I believed it. I really believed that that woman cheated on him, and he shot that next door neighbor in the leg. I really did. We pulled off that street, and we head home. Before we could make it home, I was on my phone on Harris County Appraisal District. I was smart enough this time. I'm dumb about a lot of shit that's going to that's gonna occur on this series. But I was smart enough to get the house number, the name of the street, subdivision, all of that. I punched it into HCAD, property search. The same owners have been owning that house since 2011, since that lot was sold, since the, the, the bricks was put on that motherfucker. It was already there. Nobody, no other couple had that house I did a little bit more deeper research I took the owner's name and I plugged it in Facebook I got to the point where I searched so hard and so long that not only did I find the owners of that house on Facebook I found the picture of when they posted on Facebook that the lot was sold and they were standing there where there was foundation still on that motherfucking lot the house ain't even been built they were a newlywed Caucasian couple and that was not a picture of Jared and his ex-wife we made it home I got out that car I came upstairs I got in that bed and I put my head to the back of that headboard and he said babe you feeling okay cause mind you I'm pregnant and I looked at him and I said I have a question about that house. So, with that house, when you move there, he told me, I said, you move there, it's on so-and-so date. I said, and you and your ex-wife used to live there. Yeah, babe, that's where we lived. I said, okay. I said, so who is Ashley and Justin? He said, I don't know Ashley and Justin. I said, because Ashley and Justin been owning their house since 2011. He said, babe, where you get that from? I said, because this HCAD. And I turned the phone around. I said, because this is HCAD. You never owned that fucking house. So who is Ashley and Justin if they're the owners of the house? That man told me, babe. Man, I don't even want to tell you this. I said, tell me what? All right, man. When me and my ex-wife split, Ashley and Justin let me crash in their garage. They got their garage set up like a man cave. And to be honest with you, babe, you saw the boxes in the garage when we passed through there. That's actually where I stored my shit at. I said, Jared. I don't even believe that you know Ashley and Justin. He said, Bay, I used to work with Justin at Buffalo Wild. Again, it's another Buffalo Wild Wings. I said, Jared, yeah. Uh, I, I don't know how much more of this I could take. Bay, I promise you. I promise you ain't lying. I said, okay, cool. He got so upset and so angry because I kept saying, all right, cool. All right, cool. Don't even worry about it. Okay, cool. He kept getting so angry that he ended up storming out of that house and he was gone for hours. I have no clue where he went. So now that we have talked about the supposed house that they lived in, let me get to the part about the ex-wife. So I, I asked him, I said, and you say that you got married when? He told me a date. Might have been 2015, 2016. I said, and you said her name was Pierce Wood. He told me her last name. We're going to say it's Pierce Williams. I said, why it ain't no divorce decree for you and Pierce? He said, we got married in Louisiana. I said, oh, okay, y'all got married in Louisiana. I said, okay, I ain't, I, ain't, I ain't checked Louisiana. He said, oh, yeah, if you check the records, they there. I said, okay, bet. I'm going to check them. I'm going to damn sure check them. He said, why are you asking me all of these questions? I said, because you done lied about having a daughter. You done lied about the house. Now, if you do have an ex-wife, 
I really kind of want to know now what really happened with y'all because ain't no way in the fuck you done shot somebody. Ain't no way you done shot nobody. So now let's move into the ex-wife story. Part six, the lies he told. So before I found out about all of the lies, he explained to me about how he met his ex-wife. He told me that him and his ex-wife, they met in high school. They were actually high school sweethearts with the prom together the whole nine. They had been together for years. He told me that shortly after they graduated, they decided to go ahead and get married down in Louisiana. And he told me that him and her were unable to ever conceive a child due to the fact that he was very obese in the earlier part of his life and also up until around the age of 28 because he did tell me that he got the gastric sleeve surgery he told me that it was impossible for him to have kids his stuff just didn't work and I said wow that's 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 crazy he said and to be honest with you it is so crazy that you got pregnant by me because I didn't ever think I would be able to have kids I said well I mean you done lost a lot of weight, babe. Like, you know, I'm trying to be encouraging. I'm trying to let him know, like, hey, you know, you're not big no more. Because at that point, I saw that there was a lot of, um, what's the word that I'm looking for? Um, low self-esteem there. So I was like, I don't want you to start feeling insecure about yourself. You know, it's okay. So we move on. He talks to me about the whole story about what I said in part five about how he caught her cheating with the man, yada, 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 you know? So as I have now currently found out that he was never married, I approach him about it. I say, Hey, I could not find a divorce decree or marriage license for you and your ex-wife. I said, so, of course, I have told you this before, and I'm going to tell you this again. If I ask you a question, I already know the answer to it. So you might as well go ahead and let me know. Have you ever been married in your life? That man looked at me like he always do. And he sat with that shit. And he said, yeah, we got married. Yeah, babe, I told you I was married. I said, okay, cool. All right, cool. So once again, I had to tell him, I talked to your daddy. Your daddy said you ain't never been married to Paris. He had to flip that shit so quick. He said, I don't really want you talking to my daddy. I said, and why is that? He said, because my daddy lie a lot. Go figure. I said, okay. He said, my, of course my daddy ain't going to tell you about Paris because I caught him trying to fuck Paris at a house party. I said, do what? He said, yeah, the nigga trying to fuck his own daughter-in-law. I said, come on, bro. He said, man, my daddy get high, he get drunk, he get fucked up. And to be honest with you, he 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 will try to fuck you too. I'm going to just be honest. And I said, no, nah, I don't get that from Pop. I don't get that from Pop. Now, I do understand that people have a past. There may have been times where his daddy may have gotten a little too loose in certain situations, but I did not believe that his daddy tried to hit on the ex-girlfriend. And at this time, you know, he was saying his ex-wife. I did not believe that. So I ended up finding Paris on Facebook. I did not approach her. I did not communicate with her at all, but I did go to her Facebook page and I did notice that she was currently still living in Houston, Texas. She did have on her profile that she was single. There were no pictures of her and Jared. She was currently in Houston. Like there were pictures of her at different places in Houston, <laughs> different places. She was not in Germany. She was not in Germany, not at all. And she does not even look like the type that would even be a teacher. I really don't know what her profession is, but she did not look like that type. So he said, and speaking of Paris, she was at my job two weeks ago. I said, at your job doing what? He said, she was up there with her homegirls. I said, but I thought you told me that she lived in Germany. He said, man, she, she told me that she was back for a couple of weeks. He's still lying. Still fucking lying. 
I said, he here for a couple weeks. If she here for a couple weeks, I said, that doesn't even make sense, Jared. That don't make sense. That don't make sense. That don't make sense. So, and all in all, I did get him to admit to me that he had never been married. He ain't never had no kids and he never did live in that house. I did get him to admit that. And I also told him, I said, Jared, I do know that you were born in said hospital in said time and said date. I said, so right now, this is the time where we really stop the lies because for whatever reason, you have a problem. And I'm not the type of woman that you have to lie to because I would have liked you regardless without the lies. Now, granted, people, I do know that there were several red flags before we got here. I already know this. In the back of my head, I knew that I ain't want to be, I didn't want to be a woman with two babies, two baby dad. I ain't want that for my life. So I tried working with him through it. On the next part, I will tell you about how we tried to do counseling, premarital counseling, and how they went. Part seven, the lies he told. So now we're moving into that place where we really need to do premarital counseling. And honestly, we need to do personal <laughs> counseling. <laughs> he needs his own therapist. I need my own therapist. And I told him, I said, you know, um, I am willing to walk and to work with you through anything. But you cannot continue to keep lying to me. You cannot. You cannot keep doing this. I told him that I was unaware if he had been lying his entire life. But I know that I am going to continue praying for you. I still wanted to be married. I still desire to be married so badly. And I stuck with that man through premarital counseling, through all of that. So we started going through counseling. And I'm not going to lie, the lady handled the both of us with a lot of grace. Um, she triggered a lot of demons within that relationship. She really did. Up to the point where he told me, he said, hey, I think she's biased. I really want a male to do our counseling. Let's not go to her anymore. And I agreed. I told her, I told him, I said, you know, if you feel that way, I do want the both of us to be comfortable. So if you do feel that she is biased or, you know, if you don't think she's the best fit, we can most definitely move forward with another counselor. So we tried allowing my cousin and his wife to counsel us. And then that's when I broke the ice and I told them, y'all, this man is literally an habitual liar. Like he is a liar. And I don't know if I am taking the right step here. They told me that I should basically investigate <laughs> on why he's lying like this. And what, like in other words, ask him, why does he feel like he needs to lie to you? And then build from there. And they worked with us. Now, his reason to all of us for why he was lying was because he knew that in order to keep a woman of my caliber, he knew that he was going to have to have himself together. He knew that. And what dawned on me so crazy was that I had dated men that didn't have a dime to their name. And they still was honest and they still was trustworthy. And then I turned around and got crossed up with a man that did nothing but lie to me. He, he was paying some bills, but I deserved better. So, and all in all, marriage counseling did not work for us. Well, premarital counseling, it did not work for us. I prayed. I got through it. He went to every doctor's appointment with me, you know, for a kid. He was there every step of the way. And I said to myself, I said, you know what? Like, I'm going to take this chance. It was stupid. It was the dumbest thing. But once again, 
this was on me. This was totally on me. So I knew that I was dealing with a liar. I knew that I knew the things that he lied about. That was one thing. But I also told him, like, hey, don't lie to me about nothing else. Like, let's not do that. So now I want to take you into meeting his mom. Part eight, the lies he told. So at this time, I tell him, like, hey, I I really want to go ahead and meet your mom. We at least at this point, anywhere between two to three months in the game, I said, hey, I I really feel like it's time that I meet your mom. You've met my family. I've met only your father. I've met a couple of your cousins when we was over there visiting with your daddy. So let me meet your mom. He tells me, babe, remember I told you my mom is a doctor and you know her availability is a little tight. I said, okay, cool, 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 cool. I said, but still, I really do need to meet her. Now, prior to me meeting her, when he told me that his mama was a doctor, when I found out his mama name, I did a Google search because he told me that she owned her own practice and she did, uh, it was like a, um, she was like a, a primary care physician. Like she did everybody, babies, you know, adults, you know, she, she was just a PCP all around, but she had her own practice. Now I looked up, all practices in Houston, Texas and surrounding areas. Her name did not come up as being a physician. Her name did not come up as being uh, someone that owned their own practice. So I was concerned about that as well. And so uh, he contacted her. He never told me like a date and a time that we were going to meet. One Saturday, I was at home. I probably was laying in the bed. He called me because he was at work at Phil and Derrick's and he said, babe, my mom, she going she gonna to pull up uh, if you want to meet her, you know, you can come on through. Bet. I'm on my way. Put on clothes, got up there. And his mama came roughly shorter after I got there. Excuse me. I said, <clears throat> um, I walked outside. I went and met her. And I said, hi, it's so nice to meet you. He said, mama, this is Jillian. Jillian, this is my mama. I said, it's, it's, it's really nice to meet you. She looked me up and down. And her first question to me was, Who is your OBGYN? Ma'am, hello? How you how you doing, ma'am? Who who's your OBGYN? I said Dr. Kathy Sander at at Kelsey Sebo. One of the best in the nation. Okay, I know some folks over at Kelsey Sebo. I can always make a phone call if I need to. Now at the time I'm looking because I'm saying to myself, Oh, maybe she just concerned about the well-being of her grandchild. And if something were to ever happen, maybe, you know, if I needed assistance or something, she could make a phone call. That's not what that was at all. Not what that was at all. After she asked that question, I said, oh, oh, okay. And she said, so I have another question, though. Um, you you and him, y'all met pretty fast. You, you already? You already pregnant by him? Trying to insinuate that. There is no way that I could be pregnant by her child. Ma'am, it has been two or three months. We have been back to back, ma'am. So, yeah, this is baby. This most definitely his baby. Ain't nobody else been at my house but your son. Yes, ma'am, this is, this is your baby. So, that had already put a bad, sour taste in my mouth about her because now you asking inappropriate, conversa- uh, inappropriate questions in, a conversa- in our first conversation at that. So, I, I had a little trouble trying to have respect for a woman that was so disrespectful to me at the very first attempt. So, later on that day, he comes home or later on that night he comes home and I say to him you know hey uh, I didn't really want to bother you about this when you was at work however um, it, it, it really bothered me about what your mom said when I met her and he said well um, what what did she say because I, I really wasn't kind of paying attention and granted he was not he was at work so he kind of left us alone a couple of times and I mean after she said what she said, I kind of like walked off and I was like, all right, I'm about to go ahead and go on back to the house because that's weird. I remember calling my mama and telling my mama, hey, I met Jerry mama. Boom. This is what she said. My mama was like, what type of bullshit is it? My mama, y'all ignorant and I'm going to get to her too. So, <laughs> so, um, I told him, I said, I ain't really appreciate that. He asked me what she said. I ran it to him and he said, babe, I had already told you. I really didn't want you to meet him. He always referred to her as her first name. He never really called her mom. 
You never did. So I said, okay. I said, I, I understand that you told me that she really didn't like any of your past relationships or past women or whatever. However, I am going to be the mother of your first child. Like, does that not ring a bell to, to her? I said, is she not going to be like the grandmama type? You know, somebody that we would be able to rely on to like help us with the kid. He said, oh yeah, she'll be good for that. I'm sure she's pretty excited about the baby. But this all just happened so fast. Granted, it did. It did happen so fast. Okay, cool. I said, no problem. So I get on the phone, you know, me and his daddy, we chopping it up. And I, I, I tell his daddy, I said, you know, hey, you know, I met his mom. <clears throat> you know, where, where, where does she work at? Because Jared told me she's a, she's a doctor and she had the audacity to be asking me all about my position name and stuff like that. I said, so, you know, what's her deal? He said, man, that's just who she is, bro. That's just who she is. She, she always been like that. He said, but wait a minute now. She ain't no damn doctor. <laughs> I'm going to tell you that now. He said, if anything, she's an LVN. I said, an LVN? He said, man, that girl a damn nurse. She ain't no, he said, I don't even think she's a registered nurse. I said, no, bro, this, 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 this woman got to be a doctor. She got to be a doctor. Like, ain't no way this man that told me that his mama is a damn doctor and she's a damn LBN or an RN. His daddy never lied to me. Do you hear me? His daddy never lied to me. Come to find out his mama was an RN going to school to be a nurse practitioner at the time that I met him. When I tell you, when I had that conversation with his daddy, I waited a couple of days or so. And I asked him, he was driving, he was driving me somewhere. And I asked him, I said, your mama a doctor where again? He said, remember, you know, I told you she 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 got her own practice or whatever. I said, your mama are in. Your daddy told me your mama are in. He said, no, my, my, my mama, my mama most definitely, my mama most definitely a doctor. I said, okay, babe. I said, call your mama right now. Call her on the phone right now. And he did. But he did not put his mama on speakerphone. But I seen him dial his mama number. He said, mom. What you tell me you was in school for? She obviously answered. I have no idea what she said to him. And she asked him, why you asked me that? He said, I, I just I just couldn't remember what you told me you was going to school for. He hung up. I said, so is she a doctor or not? He said, ah, she in, she's in school to uh, get her uh, master's in nursing. I said, so she's not an MD. Your mama ain't no doctor. I said, so that's not that's not making any sense to me. Once again, once again now, that's another lie that he told that he could have killed. Why, why in the world would you tell somebody that your mama is a full ass MD when she ain't nothing but a damn RN? Why, why would you say that? Part nine, I'm going back to the timeline of our relationship, but I had to get that out about me meeting his mama. Part nine, the lies he told. I stated at the very end of part eight that I was going to get back to the timeline of our relationship so that I can really get down to the nitty gritty of why I am doing this testimony. Uh, I do want to clarify a couple of things before I start part nine, part nine, however, because I do see all of your comments, the negative ones and the positive ones. Uh, to address a couple of the negative ones, I understand that you may be confused. Uh, maybe you're expecting me to be exactly like Miss Risa Tisa. That's not going to happen. I'm a totally different woman and I have a totally different story. It may sound similar, but trust and believe hands were thrown in mine to the point where almost with some killing happening so I, I'll get to that but you know let me just be clear that I'm going to tell this story the way that I'm going to tell it and if you can't stick around for it try to go and watch somebody else because it looks like a lot of women now are coming out with their own story so uh, thank you for sticking around how you have but I'm going to keep moving pushing forward um, another thing that I want to clarify I see a lot of people are still confused about the whole car situation with the tag that was his mama's car that was his mama's tag okay the alleged baby was not his real daughter his dad told me that and I confirmed that that was not his real 
his real baby. I also confirmed that he was never married. I have also confirmed that he never owned a house with his ex-wife. I confirmed that his ex-wife was uh, not in Germany teaching. I have confirmed a lot of things so far. So if you hadn't gotten caught up, try to watch parts one through eight. And now we're going back to part nine. All right. So moving along with the timeline, it's all screwed up, guys. It's extremely screwed up. I don't have dates. I'm 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 gonna just be honest. Just keep in mind, my initial meeting with him was January fifth. By the end of January or the beginning of February, we met at my house to have pizza to have a discussion. We did have a one night stand that night. He never left. He gradually started moving things in over a course of time. February twenty eighth, we got engaged. In March, sometime in March, I met his mom. Let's not forget, I had already met the dad in February. And so around April, May-ish, we are trying to do premarital counseling. So that's the timeline of the events right there. Also in March, we did go to Mississippi to meet my family. So that's the timeline right there. Short, sweet, simple. Don't add none to it. Don't take none away from it. It's cool. We got married June 29th, 2020. Before we got married, there are a couple of things that I want to note before the marriage started. Both of us have always had two cellular devices, one personal, one for work. I assumed that his second phone was always from work. He told me that the co-owners of Phil and Derrick's bought that phone for him and that's his work phone. That's where he get his work emails. That's where customers can call to make reservations in with him, leave bad reviews, whatever the case may be. I, I, I literally believed all of that. Come to find out that was a lie. That was another phone that that man had that he was paying the bill on because I could never understand why that phone kept getting cut off. He could not handle two phone bills because mind you, he's still paying all of my household bills he paying everything however i am the type to go through the phones i am so i'm gonna get to that a little bit later so before marrying him i sat in the tub one night and this will be extremely hard for me to get out so just bear with me the night before i married that man i had already been praying i had already been asking god you know please fix him and I know that's the wrong prayer I do I ain't no weak Christian now I'm 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 pretty I'm pretty put together but at that time in my life I was vulnerable I desired to be married I really did I said God I have been praying for this man I have been praying for this relationship I have been praying over this baby that isn't here yet I do really really care for him and I really think and really know that he cares for me and my son. And I was talking about my oldest at the time. I said, so I need a sign. I need you to let me know if this is my husband or not. Immediately in my spirit, I felt no. I heard an audible voice tell me this is not your husband. No. My mom was in town. My mom and my sister, they were at the house with me. And I never told them this. But God told me no. He told me no. And I still, that next day, I still went along with it. And the sign that God gave me after telling me no was him coming home. And we had a disagreement about something. And he looked at me and he said, you ain't got to marry me if you don't want to. That should have been my chance there to say, you know what? Matter of fact, I, I'm, I'm probably not. We can go ahead and call all this shit off. I was the one that paid for the ceremony at the judge's office because uh, we didn't get married at a courthouse. We got married at a law firm. Um, you, y'all know that attorneys are judges, so... Um, or judges are attorneys, I'm sorry. So we we got married um, at his law firm office. We could only have a maximum of 12. His dad and his stepmom were the only two that showed up. His mother was not in attendance. 
But God had already showed me in so many ways from the lies and from the behavior that was coming that he was not meant to be my husband. I moved extremely fast with this man. I fell for the okie doke. I was stupid. I was confused as well. I was a, I was extremely vulnerable. And my heart felt that we could make it work. My heart felt that. Don't ever listen to your heart. Don't ever listen to your heart. Listen to God. Listen to God because God will never, ever fail you. And now I would like to move on to part 10 to take you through after the ceremony, everything that occurred until the end of my divorce. Part 10, the lies he told. So right after the ceremony, um, we go to this restaurant in the Woodlands. It was a seafood restaurant. We got married on a Sunday and my mom and my sister they had to fly back out. So it was just me, him, um, my father-in-law and my mother-in-law, like my, the stepmother-in-law, I guess that's how you would, would, would phrase it. And so we're there. I'm excited. I'm happy. Uh, I'm in La La Land. I'm like, you know what? I'm finally married. I'm Mrs. Such and Such. And I said, this feels amazing. We went home that night do what lovers do and you know we, we moving on with life I'm currently working from home you know I'm pregnant my boss at the time was like hey I don't want you to come in I don't need you to be exposed you know I want you and the baby to you know be okay so as time moves on uh, he was still still actively working um, he would come home, you know, things were on the up and up. Um, then all of a sudden, one day I got a um, messenger message from a young lady for purposes of this story. Her name is Erica. And Erica reached out and said, would you divorce your husband if he was cheating on you? And she, she just kept typing like kept hitting and it go it went to my message request so I didn't initially see it at first and so she was like I really need you to contact me I, I need you to hit me up is there any way that I can get your number she just going 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 and I'm like man who is this woman who is this so by the time I get to like her Facebook page or whatever I get her full name and I ask Jared I say Jared do you know this woman he tells me, yeah, um, that's a stalker bitch. I said, a stalker bitch? He said, yeah, man, I was fucking with that girl for a little minute, man, and she just downright crazy. She done hit up every woman that I done been with since her. Don't pay her no mind, yada, yada, yada. I said, okay. And I said, so how she, how she get my information because you got her blocked on he told me he, he she was blocked on everything he said man i don't know she probably went to my daddy page seen your name because his daddy did post pictures non-stop of me always posted pictures of us together posted pictures of our marriage posted pictures of me when i would post pictures he would repost the pictures just i mean was my dog for real still to this day my nigga and so i said okay that's that's kind of strange so um I responded back to her being the, the woman that I am coming woman to woman. Hey, sis, I'm Mrs. Such and such Mrs. M.R.S. Period. Being the biggest dumb bitch in the world. I said, I know my motherfucking man. He go to work. He come home. He ain't, you know, I already know that you a stalker. I know this and the third. And so I blocked him. This woman did try reaching out to me on Instagram later on, you know, in the story, all of that type of stuff. And I, I am going to get back to her. So something led me to start going through his devices. He did have two phones, one personal, one work phone. So I would always go through his phone when he was asleep. The reason I started going through his phone was because he, the phones would start vibrating in the middle of the night. Who calling you at three o'clock? Who calling you at three? 
people were texting and contacting him from text free numbers i would try to call the number back it would say welcome to text free or however the little audio go when they don't answer the phone so i'm like all right that's strange who are all these numbers these random numbers i had no idea who these people were and at the time i didn't even know if it was multiple people i just thought that it might have been the crazy woman that he claimed was a stalker bitch Come to find out, this wouldn't that wasn't the case at all. It wasn't the case. So, um, I would still go and uh, visit him, like at the restaurant and things like that. And one night, he came home and he said, "Babe, I'm about to start applying for other jobs." I said, "What's wrong with filling Darius?" He was like, "To be honest with you, babe, I ain't trying to be up there no more. I ain't trying to be up there no more." I said, "Okay." He said, "They working me like a Hebrew slave." You know, I need to make um, adjustments because you're about to get ready to have this baby because my due date was November 15th. He said, so I need to make sure that I am at a place where I can get FMLA because believe it or not, he did tell me that at Phil and Darius, he did not have any insurance benefits whatsoever. And I believed him because, I mean, it was, I ain't gonna, I ain't gonna even say to come in because y'all will fire me up about that, but you know, Whole businesses uh, that are uh, us's, they don't offer a lot of benefits. You know, sometimes you can barely get paid. Sometimes. So, um, he started actively looking for other positions. He finally landed at Fish City Grill in Sugarland, Texas. We, at the time, lived on the border of Cypress, Texas. So, Sugarland is a hike. It ain't that bad, but it ain't down the street either. Phil and Derek's went down the street either, but you know, all right. And so he says, uh, babe, I got an interview. They're going to be paying me. I want to say that man told me they were going to be paying him $65,000 a year. It was going to come with benefits, insurance, FMLA. So it worked out perfect. I said, okay, babe, that's perfect. He said, so uh, when this lease is up here, um, I will commute right now, which he did. He commuted for a good four or five months. He said, I will start commuting, but when the lease is up, let's try to look for a house and then, you know, maybe we can find something that'll be closer out that way. See, the thing about a narcissist is they'll try to isolate you from your family because my family lives out here in Cyprus. Yes, I'm from Mississippi, but my Mississippi family, they're out here. My help is out here. I said, okay, babe, we married. So, you know, I'm like, all right, I'm going to support you. You know, we going to do such and such. So he starts working at Fish City Grill. Um, when he starts working at Fish City Grill, one beautiful day in October, I am headed out for not only a nail appointment, but I am headed out for um, to vote. Uh, it was voting time. I don't even know who I was going to vote for, but I, I, I was going to vote. I get to the third stair in the town home. I slip and fall and I roll over and when I pick my leg up, my foot was hanging like Dak Prescott was. I had broke my ankle in three places. There was no one at home with me. He was in Sugar Land and Fish City Grill. The, the God thing about this is that I had my key in my hand that had the fob to the garage so that anybody that needed to come through, they could come through the garage, whether there was a paramedics anybody in my family so I immediately call my cousin Coco and Coco said hey what's up I am in pain I'm crying and I tell her I just fell down the stairs I'm I'm about to give birth by November 15th it was it had to be like October maybe 20th don't quote me on a date and I said I just fell I fell down the stairs she like oh shit I'm on my way she called a 911. They both make it around the same time. They get me up on the stretcher. She's on the phone with Jared. She's like, hey, she just fell down the stairs. He's panicking. He's like, okay, okay, I'm on my way. I'm coming to get there. I'm going to be there. I get to the emergency room. It takes him quite a while to get there because he's coming from Sugar Land. And I'll finish the story in part 11. Thank you for watching the video. I'll be back later with more. Have a great day on purpose. Love you all. Mwah.